Okay, so in the GitHub desktop app, you can click the button that says open in Explorer on Windows or open in Finder on the Mac, or you can go to the repository menu and choose show in Explorer or show in Finder on the Mac, um, and it will take you to uh, the folder that has our current repository in it. We're going to come back to the turtle stuff later. Today we're going to explore the class notes project. Okay. So open up the class notes folder and in there you will see a package file and a readme.txt file. We're going to open up the package file to open up the BlueJ project for this class notes project. Other than the readme file, there's nothing in here yet because we're going to actually create the class from scratch. We're going to walk through these steps um, together. So let's, let's go through this. Step one is to click on the new class button, um, which is in the upper left corner of your BlueJ project window. So click on new class, um, and BlueJ will prompt you for the class name. By convention, Classes start with a uppercase letter, capital letter. So we're name of our class is going to be Hello Printer. So we'll start with a capital H, E L L O. Um, we cannot have spaces in our class names. Um, and the convention though is if we have multiple words, each word starts with an uppercase letter. So this is called camel case. So we'll have capital P and then printer. The defaults are fine. We're writing code in Java. It's going to be a new class. We'll worry about the other options later. Um, just go ahead and hit OK. Now we will see that we have a new class in our BlueJ project window, represented by the orange rectangle. And if we double click on it, it will open up the BlueJ editor. This is what I recommend you put on the other half of your screen from our, our slides. I'm going to put it on my entire screen, though, so that you all can see it, um, and we have plenty of, plenty of room. BlueJ just did a few things automatically for us. Okay? When we said we wanted to create the Hello Printer class, not only did it, um, it created this class, and it created it based on a template, so there's a bunch of code already here. We're going to get rid of or change all of it. Um, but it also created a file called helloprinter.java. So that new file was automatically created for you in BlueJ, um, by BlueJ in the, the folder. Okay. What I have found that works really well as we're going through these things, when we're working together as a whole class, um, rather than taking notes in a notebook or separately, we'll take notes using comments in Java and they'll be immediately around the actual concept we're taking notes about in the code. So that way when you go back and review this later, you'll have your notes and you'll have the code all in one place. Okay. Um, so we're going to change some of the stuff. The template says write a description of class hello printer here. We're going to replace this with some general notes about classes in Java. So first things first, every Java program contains one or more classes. For example, hello printer is the class that we are in the midst of defining right now. So that's a change from Python. Right? We didn't have to have classes in Python. Um, we could just write a Python statement and immediately run it. Um, in Java, it requires a little bit more structure. We have to have one or more classes. In general, every source file the name of this source file is helloprinter.java. It's the one that BlueJ just created for us. In general, every source file contains one class. And again, our class is hello printer. Often when we're learning these new concepts, I'm going to phrase it as in general or usually. Okay? And the reason why I'm couching it in that way is because next semester we're going to learn a lot of nuanced details about Java. Um, and I don't want you next semester to be like, Mr. Schmidt lied to me. He said there's every source file has exactly one class, and I now know that's not true. 
Um, so that's why I say things like in general or usually, um, just to couch it, couch it a little bit. But for now, we're going to just go with that. There's certain rules in Java. So one of our focus for today is what are the rules we have to follow in Java and what are the conventions we, have to, we should follow in Java. Rules are enforced by the Java compiler. If we don't follow them, our code won't compile, our code won't run. Conventions is simply like best practice, an agreement among all of us and really the entire Java community about the best way to write code. We rely on these conventions to understand each other's code. So they're really important, but the Java compiler doesn't enforce them. Um, there are other tools that can, but the Java compiler does not. So here's a rule, though. The source file name must match the class name. Conveniently for us, BlueJ takes care of this. Right? Um, when we created the new class hello printer, it automatically created the file hello printer.java. If we were to change the name of this class, BlueJ would automatically change the file name for us. Okay? It will always keep them in sync, which is wonderful. So when we use BlueJ, we don't have to worry about this, but I want you to be aware that it, it is a rule. Okay. We'll contrast this with, our, with a convention. By convention, class names start with an uppercase letter. That is not a rule. If you create a new class and it starts with a lowercase letter, Java doesn't care. It will work. The rest of us care. Um, and the reason why is especially as we're learning a new language, we're going to rely on certain syntax clues to help us know what these words mean in the program. So we, we will rely upon the fact that when we see a capital letter, we're like, oh, that word represents a class. I know that's true because it starts with a capital letter. That's, that's going to be really important, especially as we're learning this new language. So that's why we're going to follow all these conventions. All this, code we've, all this code we've been typing is in a multi-line comment block. Okay? Multi-line comment blocks in Java start with a slash and an asterisk, a slash and a star, um, and they end with a star and an asterisk. Okay? Um, so both of those things. This one starts with a slash and two stars, which means it's a special type of documentation comment block. We're not going to worry about that right now. We'll worry about that in our next unit. Um, related to that are these tags that start with the at symbol, so at author. We're going to focus on these much more in our next unit, but for now we're going to replace your name with whatever your GitHub name is. Um, and I like to replace the version with today's date, so it's a good way for me to remember where we were on different days. So today's the 20th of August. So we have some, some notes here at the top in our, our multi-line comment block. And then there's a whole bunch of stuff that was generated from the template. Um, the key information here is that we are defining a new class. And the Java compiler knows that's the case because we, have, we use the keyword class followed by the name of the class and then an opening curly bracket. We're going to delete everything after the curly bracket all the way up to but not including the closing curly bracket. We're going to get rid of all that template code because we're going to write this stuff from scratch today. So first things first, we now have a Java class. That's great. It's not very useful. Okay. The reason why it's not very useful Oops, I went a little too quickly there, um, is it needs to have some methods. Okay. Um, we're going to type a comment. And the way we can do multi-line comments in BlueJ, if you do slash and then star, shift 8, when you hit enter, it will automatically turn it into a multi-line comment block. Um, and as we keep hitting enter, it will keep putting new asterisks in there for us, which is great. All right, so here's our first comment um, within our class. A class contains methods. There is a lot of vocabulary today. Okay? We're defining a class. We're defining methods. We're going to define statements and identifiers. These are words with which you may be familiar um, from previous, 
programming classes? If so, they still mean the same thing. Just because we're in Java doesn't change what a class and a method and an identifier is. Um, and if they're not familiar, don't worry. We're going to define them as, as we go. Most Java applications, or most Java programs, we'll say, um, contain a class with a main method. The main method is a special method in a Java class. Right? The reason why it's a special method is that the main method is executed when the program starts. So when we write a Java program, and we let's say we run it in a traditional way from like maybe a, com a command line, um, by default it will look for the designated class, it will find its main method, and that's what runs first. Now you may be thinking, wait a minute, when we did the turtle stuff, there was no main method, and that seemed to run pretty well. Um, what's up with that? Um, so the main method is what's automatically run when the program starts. Now with our turtle demo, there was no main method and our turtle worked, right? That's taking advantage of a special feature of BlueJay. So BlueJay gives us some flexibility. We can run methods other than the main method directly in BlueJay. But that's not a normal Java feature, okay? Um, so let's write our first main method. We're going to type several words here, none of which should make sense at this point. Over the course of the next several days and even weeks, we will decipher what the purpose of each and every one of these words, right? We're not going to do that today. So for day, we're just going to treat this as, hey, this is just how we define a main method. This is the method header that we'll use over and over again. Um, so it starts with public, and then static, and then void, and then finally main. So that's what, why we call it the main method. And then in parentheses, we'll say string, and we'll have an open and close square bracket, and then arcs. And then I'll do an open curly brace, and a closing curly brace, and that's our main method. And again, none of this is supposed to make sense at this point. Just treat this as something we have to have to make our program run. This is just all the like required stuff so that we can actually write something that does something useful. This is clearly where Python has a little bit of an advantage, right? Because we could have just written our code by now. All right. Our program still isn't useful. Yes, we have a class. And yes, now we have a main method. But the main method doesn't do anything. So let's do another multi-line comment block. Slash star enter. The point of a method is that a method contains statements. What do we mean by statements? Well, statements do useful things in our programs. Right? Statements, in fact, may invoke other methods. For example, in this main method that we're in the middle of defining, we're going to invoke the println method in just a moment. Thinking back to Friday, on Friday, you were inside the make awesome turtle pattern method, and you invoked several other methods. Um, you invoked the forward method, and maybe you inv and you invoked the set color method, and maybe you invoked the turn left method. Methods are very similar to functions in Python, so there's a, a connection. There is an important difference though between Python and Java. In Python, we can just call functions. In Java, in general. It's a little bit of a qualifier. But in general, methods are invoked on objects. And the object that we're going to use today is an object that has already been created for us. And it's referenced by the variable system.out. Thinking back to Friday with the turtle, you invoked methods on objects. A turtle object was created in the code that you started with. 
and it was referenced by that variable crush. And on that crush variable, you called the method forward um, and turn left and set color and whatever else you did. Okay. Just like Python, when we invoke a method, that means like call that method, um, it's followed by parentheses. So when invoking a method, Arguments are passed in parentheses. For example, we're going to pass the string hello world. That's the classic first program of all programming languages. If you call a method and it doesn't need any additional information, like turn left, you still need the parentheses, just like you do in Python. You just don't put any arguments in those parentheses. Um, if the method needs more information, like forward, because forward isn't sufficient, it's like, well, how far forward? How many steps do you want the turtle to take? Then you do need to put an argument inside those parentheses. So let's do all the things in an actual line of code. So I've moved to after the end of the multi-line comment block, and we're going to start with our object, which is referenced by system.out. When we call methods on objects, and you, you may have picked this up on Friday, we use the dot operator, okay. um, the period. So system.out dot, and then we will say println, println is the method that we are calling on the system.out object. It's a method, so we got to have our parentheses after it. And inside those parentheses, we need to specify more information because what is it we want printed to the terminal? We want to print the string, hello world, hello comma world. And now we have the, the argument that we need. Another difference uh, between Python and Java is that in Java, statements end with a semicolon. The semicolon tells the Java compiler this is the end of the statement. You don't need that in Python because the end of the line serves as the end of the statement. But in Java, um, we can have our statements span multiple lines. So we need some sort of symbol to say, I'm done. And the semicolon means I'm done. You're going to forget a semicolon hundreds of times. But by April, you will have this down. No, I'm just kidding. You'll have it down in a few weeks. Um, but it's, it's frustrating at the beginning as you get used to the Java and you're constantly forgetting your semicolons. So let's try this out. We actually have a, a, a somewhat useful Java program here. As a reminder, to compile our Java program, which we have to do before we can run it, we can cl click the Compile button in the upper left. Um, or you can press Control-K on Windows or Command-K on the Mac and compile it. And it should say in the status bar at the bottom, class compiled, no syntax errors. If it doesn't say that, turn to your neighbor and say, help. Um, and if you two aren't quite sure why it says that, let me know and I will come help. But I want to make sure everyone's class compiles before we move forward. Remember, our goal is to make Dozens of mistakes a day, so you might as well start now. So if you have a syntax error, that's okay. Anyone need a hand? Does anyone's screen not say class compile? Fantastic. All right, here's how we run it. We switch back to the BlueJ project window. We right click on our hello printer class, and we choose the main method from the menu. When we do this, a dialog pops up which allows us to specify additional um, arguments to our program. We're not going to use this feature until next semester. So for now, we'll just hit OK. The BlueJ terminal window will pop up, and it should say, hello world. Congratulations, you wrote your first Java program from scratch. And there was much rejoicing.